best news. Did you know that today is Love Your Sewing Machine Day? Yes. Did you know that? Love Your Sewing Machine Day. So, how many of you love your sewing machine? Yay! Yay. Whoa, so how many machines do you have? Uh, count them out. Three, two, five, ten. Five, ten. Oh, the lady has ten. I, you have six. Ah, oh, I love my baby lock. In in my studio in Julian for a class, I have nine. Whoa, I'm not bragging. <laughs> I just love my baby lock. I have nine in Julian, and then I counted down here in my head. How many do I have? I have three. So how many does that make? Twelve. Twelve. Do I win? Yes. 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 I win. Yay! But it's such a good day. And not only is this Love Your Sewing Machine Day, but today we're all dressed special because we're here representing a special <laughs> star. <laughs> Are we cute? Yes. Aww. <laughs> Tonight you're going to see the Mexican star. Woo! Get it, get it. Also, I'm looking around. There was a PDF file that you were to download, but I don't see everybody has one. We better get your patterns. Okay, Michelle. So, did you get that email? Yes. yes. Yeah? Did you print it? Yes, but Teresa made them get them for us. Oh, so y'all getting one. So, Merritt was sick. It was so sad. Our artist was sick. He had to take some time off so we couldn't get our patterns to the press. But he's doing better now, we think. He came back to work, so we should have those. But you're going to get nice printed ones later. How's that? But you've got great patterns to, sh to share. You want to see the quilts? Yes. Yes. The Mexican star. And this is really one of the patterns from Ruby McKim's book. 101 patchwork. Yeah? So the first one, okay, and I want to hear lots of noise, but your favorite one, I want you to be even louder. Uh, it's going to be oh. tough to know what's the best one yet, okay? Oh. So we have traditional. Ooh. And Sue Bouchard did this one, and then kind of tip over here and show them, and you guys make noise too. Okay, it's a big block. It's an 18-inch block. It's very traditional. There are six in this block, and it has like a little, like um, nine patch right in the center, but these are sashing pieces. And in this one, the sashing all joins together, and it creates a secondary pattern. Huh? Yes, it's so pretty. Now, Amy did it. Sue is very, um, she is like modern. So, what Amy did was do modern long arm quilting in a very old traditional pattern. Isn't it fun? Mm -hmm. So, it's simple to pick out the patterns. These are called wedges right here. And she used the same color of fabric in the border. And right here in the binding, she couldn't figure out which color to use. So she did the old-fashioned concept of a little folded border included in her binding. I love that touch, don't you? So it's just a lap robe. It's very, very pretty, and that is now, Sue's. I just, oh. Can I point Martin. out one thing? Oh, Patty's well, mic, Sue, I can tell you. Yeah, um, Sue did her sashing in a darker color. Just remember that when you see the other ones, because sometimes we do a, a dark wedges with light sashing. So you can get ah. ideas, decide what you like when you make your quilt. And okay. do we want to look at the back? Can we see anything oh. on the back? No, no, pretty cool back though, Not huh? Not too much. And that yeah. binding looks very, very pretty. Yes, it does. Very, very nice. Okay, remember that one. Oh. And now, oh, you're bringing the quilts from over there. Ooh, look at this one. Get ready, it's pink. Pink. <laughs> very pink. Oh, they like that one. This well, is good. Nice. Nice. 
So do you want to talk about this Well, one, yeah, this was the first one. Um, kind of what happened this month was Eleanor didn't know have a plan. She, <laughs> <laughs> that never happened before. That was the first time. So she didn't know what block to make. Oh. So I said, I want to look at that book. I want to find a block. And so I it. looked all through the book. And I like the Mexican star, uh, but I said, ooh, that looks kind of tricky to put the blocks together. Does it look like they're set on point? Oh, no, it's really a trick. What's that? We're wide. We're wide? Okay, I can oh. do that. Oh. Oh. Okay. Oh. oh. Wow. Yeah. Okay. It looks like it's set on point. Yeah, it does. I doesn't. said, oh, I don't know if I can match all those corners. So I thought, well, I'll just do a, a block and then put little stars between it. So it turned out this was the first one that I did, and I kind of played around with sizes. So I made one block, and then uh, Eleanor said, come in here, Teresa needs something to sew. And I said, <laughs> oh, she can finish my quilt. So I talked Teresa into finishing the quilt. But um, it's... It's Teresa, Patty, and also Amy Potter. Patty did little um, butterflies. She's the fussy cut queen. And you can see the little butterflies throughout. Yeah, so. Very, very pretty. Yeah, and this is called Pretty and Pinks. Pinks. Pretty and Pinks. Can you see it, Sandy? Okay, okay, so I've got to step over a little bit. You guys push me right off my you spot. Can go with oh. Me. I'm going to hand you. Oh no, okay. you have to talk about this is no, your quilt. Oh one. no, oh, you no, you can talk. Come on. You can talk into my into okay. my now into you my, have to talk my. into Patty's chest. Well, what should I say? You have to tell what you did. <laughs> I picked these uh, solid colors because Orion insists it shows a lot better on paper or in print, darker, brighter colors. And then it, it was kind of boring to do uh, just that one color. So I kind of like with a jelly roll, I start playing around with different colors. And then, of course, on the end, I didn't have enough color. So whatever I could mix together, that's what I did. I do like it, though, the bottom one. But you could tell whatever the jelly rolls. And they're always different. So you, I can't really, you know, it depends on the jelly roll. But Yes, yeah. and br uh, bright colors to me, I have to get used to solid. Sometimes they pop too much, but I think they soften it without, with different colors. The, my inspiration was this. I just felt like it was a water movement or, you know, fall or something. It was such an inspiration fabric there. And we didn't have any jelly roll this morning. And Martha just cut a specific only 24 for us. Oh. Uh, you know, I think they're really, really Look at beautiful. This. I just yeah. think you guys beautiful. are the first to see it. Mm -hmm. And then, like you can tell, I only use one set of wedges, uh, just one set. Well, uh, then, from the same strip, I, we cut the corners here, you know. And then I still have leftovers to do the binding, and you still have leftovers to do a second quilt almost. Oh, nice. El oh, yeah. The wedges. I, yeah. <coughs> Eleanor can show it oh, you right here. Oh, okay. I have it drawing it there. Yeah, so um, let's see if um, Orion can go in quotes. Let's see. These are just marked. So this is a two and a half inch strip. and. <coughs> the yellow, notice the yellow down in the very bottom. You'll see a pair. Okay, we're using our wedge ruler. It's the same one in a water wheel and in also the braid. But if you, you have to cut uh, the wedge ruler in pairs because they are mirror image. Right, so this strip is wrong sides together. Now, actually, you only need to have one pair of wedges, but Teresa just couldn't waste this little space in between, so she cut a second wedge and second pair. So that's what she said for the next quilt. But anyhow, it doesn't use much. She used our wedge, and then 
you notice that they all have two and a half inch squares. These are called the four squares and the center square. If you just turn your ruler around, you can cut two and a half inch squares right there. And so that's all that you really use out of a strip. And what's left in between, you can open it up. And that's what's the binding. Ooh. Good. You did good. All right. All right. So very modern looking, huh, with the gray? Very modern. And Martha is over there cutting these right now. Very, very nice. So, so I see like the green. There's three values of green. This is one, two, three. And I go, where's the fourth one? And here it is over here. So they're supposed to be four different values in one color. Six colors. Yeah. Six, six colors, colors. Four different values. Six times four is? <laughs> and somebody thought it out for you. Isn't that good? Okay, the next one. Oh, my goodness. I forgot my um, my jelly roll. we got to get this. Oh, one. yes. Okay, this one Patty and I did together. It was a lot of fun. So I walked into Quilt in a Day, and Eleanor said, we just got a new, new inventory, and she was so excited, she ran over and showed me that. And within how many minutes, we were cutting it up. Yes, that's right. <laughs> And I didn't even, we were both going to go home. We went. And this is our quilt that we did. Oh. I think it's really fresh. We kept on saying, oh, it's so springy. Like, okay, and pop out so they can see over here and make lots of noise. Ooh. There you go. Whoa, that's cool. So there are six different 18 inch blocks in it of the um, Mexican star. And this, all of these points, the per turquoise, pick six darks. This is just one two and a half inch strip. One two and a half inch strip makes all uh, four pairs. And then you need to have two strips for the sashing. And then the little squares, they can come from all of the other strips left over. And the, back the background, you buy yardage for it. So I think it's really easy, and this is the best part. They're on sale. Ooh. They are 40% off for a very limited time. Like it's going to end after tonight. No. <laughs> Pretty good. But and anyhow, did you know that they start out $39.95 at 40%? They are $23.97. Whoa. And if you get this one, if you get this jelly roll, we actually did a photograph for you and told you how to make this. So you could you could copy us. We don't care, do we, Patty? I don't care. And don't forget to use your leftovers in your binding. That really adds a lot. It adds a lot. Yeah. And I love what Amy did. Amy did all of the quilting in this. She did beautiful uh, free motion. Um, motifs right in the center and little feathers all around the outside but you have the pattern of the mexican star but then when you put four blocks together you create a very nice secondary pattern nice yes very very nice oh you gotta look at the backing yes. oh yeah i love the backing oh, Ter awesome. teresa picked the backing i love look it at the quilting isn't yeah. it awesome oh yeah oh my gosh Pretty. just awesome Awesome. Okay, we're doing good. Are we doing good? Yeah. Yes. So which one do you like so far? All of them. That's what I love. I love to hear you talk that way. <laughs> okay, so then Patty wanted to do a one yeah. block wall hanging. I don't know. If there is no top. Okay, so it just if you want to just say, well, I'll just try one block and see how easy it is and fast. So I, I made a block. Uh, my favorite color, I love this orange. Um, it's kind cool. of a, the color cool. of the year. Yeah. It is. Yeah, the color of the year. It's on my refrigerator. Uh, it's on your shirt. Yeah. Oh, oh yes. yeah. Oh, you should hold it. Yeah. 
And then, um, you know, purple goes with everything. And then I had this flat, this fabric that's kind of, it's circles, but I thought, well, I'll kind of cut it in half. It'll look like a scallop edge. And, yeah, and this is just a piece of fabric. Yeah, and it's peaches and plums is the name of it. So it kind of makes want, you hungry. It makes I me hungry. I want everybody watching to know there's no more fabric. Oh. <laughs> Darn it. Oh. <laughs> That'll save a lot of phone calls. Oh. <laughs> that's, it's, that's, it's actually that's old pretty, fabric. Huh? Okay, so then Sue decided that she wanted to do something modern. Sue's not with us tonight. She was here today. She has a new grandbaby, a little oh, girl, wow. Sadie. Oh. And she's, I'm sure she's with Sadie. But anyhow, she has it's a new really home in long. Fallbrook. Here it goes. And she made Woo. this for her dining room table. Oh. Ta-da! Ah, she's very modern. Her husband loved it. She hasn't pepper. put a table runner on her table. I don't think ever she made this one. Her husband wants one on the table all the time now. Every but season. Isn't yeah. it pretty? Mm. But um, just the beautiful wedges out here, they're the print. The sashing is in this gray. You've got the little four patches and the center square are all the same. It really, um, kind of a minimum Get of fabric and colors. My one block quilt. But it's very, the very one nice, block. very, very good. And then when she um, quilted it, yeah. she did continuous quilting. Okay, think about this. She started at this point and she went down here. She went just up and down with her walking foot. Then she just turned around and just did the second side so that you can do that continuously. And she also did the same thing when she did the quarters in here. She just went continuously around so you don't have a lot of starting and stopping. Looks good. Yeah. Yes. And again, you notice Sue likes to do the dark sashing compared this one. Oh, I did dark on this one. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I th but I did the white, the white wedges. So yeah. there's so many ways to use yeah. your colors and your values. You value. just have to know the placement where they go and then come up with your own colorways, huh? Okay, so those are eight, that's 18 inch blocks. And now, da, 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 we're going to change. So well, Patty says, think small. Think small. <laughs> Al, I want to do smaller blocks. She always has to make it difficult for me to write a pattern. <laughs> Not too small, though. Yeah. These, right. It's a 12 inch block. Oh. And. Ooh. And I was inspired by Teresa's quilt where she did her six different colors. Uh, and I used a little charm pack. And actually I did uh, just three color families. I did the purples, blue, green, and then the reds and orange. So I did a uh, repeat. I did two of each colorway. And I'm gonna show you how to cut these from five inch charms. And then for, just to make the colors really stand out, I put a complementary color in the center square so those colors really sing. So that's... They sing! And then... We're singing! Yeah. Show the back! Oh. Ooh, that looks very interesting, doesn't it? Yeah, she changed her colors, her thread colors. Oh my gosh. She does that for... That is great. So these are 12 inch. 12 inch finish size blocks. Considerably different. And then another smaller project. Uh, it's a table runner. Uh, I've got the uh, fabric here at Quilt in a Day, and we do have it. I guess it's at my house. I forgot to bring it in. <laughs> Sorry, but I'll bring it in. But um, I was, I like the uh, kind of the ombre look on this green. So I, it kind of gave me the idea, and I was thinking of starlight thinking they're kind of transparent looking. Uh, I tooed two blocks the same, and then the one in the center is a little bit different. So there. And I, I love the quilting. I do too. Th this is, the, the leaves are really cool. Ryan, you should go down the side. She calls that they're the sweet pea. It is a sweet pea. It is a pea. sweet pea, yeah, you it's can It's very, that. very cute, yeah. very cute. And just kind of looks like um, smoke that's lifting up on the 
it other does. ones. It's the fog. It's the mist. <laughs> That's what it is. It's been so foggy lately. Oh my goodness. I like the way June Gloom, I like the way she makes it kind of look like a flower, the way she quilts it. <coughs> and we have to okay. show you the back. Oh, that's pretty. It's really pretty. And again, um, this is Amy, and she did change the color of thread again. It's very, very beautiful. Okay. Very, very beautiful. Oh. <gasps> is that all? That's, the, that's, that's all. all. Okay, what's your favorite one? Uh, the last one. The last uh, one? Oh. The first one. The first one. Yes. The table runner. That's nice. <laughs> Sue's table runner. Yeah. 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 The pink. With the butterflies. The butterflies. The 12 inch blocks. The 12 inch blocks. Well, it's good because it's all in the pattern. <laughs> Woo! All right. Okay, you ready? <clears throat> so, if you look at the first page, okay, it's Sue's, er, it's Teresa's quilt right on the cover right now. And so you'll remember good close-ups to see the three different values. But I want you to go to the first, um, page two, where it shows Ruby McKim's pattern. That's our Ruby there. And the Mexican star. And I just love what she said. She said, recently a quilt collector found a beautiful old Mexican star quilt up in the mountains of York State. What's well, a handsome, handsome specimen in reds and blues. And she just says how these same lovely patterns are found north, south, east, and west. And she actually blames it on the Mexican War Days. The Mexican War Days. Pat's shaking her head like he remembered those days. <laughs> no, Pat, you wouldn't remember the Mexican War Days because they were from 1846 to 1848 and it was all over the boundary of Texas and Mexico and so there was a, quite a war going on. Pat? She, I'm a dope that Atlanta woman. You are? Uh, Is, we talk about this on our tour. So this is uh, at, at Santa, at, um, oh, oh. Vista. Vista. At Vista? On Santa Fe and Vista, well, I'm trying to think of the, the one, the other one. We actually have a museum and a battlefield out in... Um, oh, that's Escondido. Yeah, it's San Pasqual. Oh, that's yeah. what I wanted to see. San Pasqual, and they actually do reenactments out there. The San Pasqual. The first Sunday of uh, every December. You are informed. The first Sunday of every December. That's really cool. Okay, so... Teresa has to come and read Spanish for me. There were two rivers that they were kind of fighting over. And who, where was the border going to be? This is called? Nueces River. The Nueces River. That was where the Mexican, um, Mexicans claimed the border should be. And the Americans said it should be the Rio, Rio Grande. Grande. And so you know who won? We did, because here we are, here in California, and it was actually 500,000 square miles that we actually got oh. from that. Pat? The man that built Rancho Cajome yes? was sent out here as a surveyor to come up with a border. Oh, my gosh. So he ended up in San Diego. Uh-huh. 350 people in San Diego. Wow. And, and he waited there until the other surveyors from Mexico and the United States got there uh -huh. so that they could come up with a border. And it was California, Arizona, New Mexico, and Texas. California, Arizona, New Mexico, and Texas mm -hmm. all ended up. Isn't that something? Mm -hmm. So Ruby McKim's talking about it about it in the quilting pattern. So you're going to have to make the Mexican star so you can share that story, huh? That's cool. All right, so I want you to go to page three, and these are going to be all the parts of the block, and you'll see how easy it is. I think we all did so many of these patterns because we all thought it was so easy and so fun. So 
The background triangles, we actually used a print in the pink. We're on the pink. Do you have the pink quilt? Maybe get the oh. pink quilt oh, the a little block. bit closer. You oh, you want the block? Uh, the or the quilt? quilt? That's good. The block is good block. too. You can kind of stand over there. You're good. Oh. So the background, the large triangles, come from 10 and 3 fourths inch squares. So you just cut them into fourths on both diagonals. And these are the triangles right here. These are the triangles. You need to have four of them for each block. And beside it are little triangles. They come from a four and a half inch square. You need to have four of them, one for each block. And they're going to go right there. Good? That's easy, huh? So then you have center squares. This is a two and a half inch square in the center. And going out. Could I give you that a little closer? Okay, okay, you're right. I'm doing it a little bit different than I did this morning. <laughs> kind of changed. We always change the rules, but this is good. You get it? Right? Yeah, you can take those away. Perfect. Take all that away. Two and a half inch square. And then the sashing. We call these strips in the middle the sashing instead of lattice. And they are two and a half inches, jelly roll, right? Mm -hmm. Jelly roll, they're two and a half I inches by 13 so. inches. We're doing good. And then there are four polka dot squares. Guess what we call these? Four squares. Four squares. <laughs> four squares. They're called four squares. Yeah, we didn't know what else to call them, right? Four squares. So that's really what makes up the block. And here we have the wedges, okay? So this is a two and a half inch strip. Remember, because of the mirror image, you're going to place them right sides together. How about let's get you on the right page. You want to see how to cut them? Let's see how to cut these. Go to page. Six, page six. And when we were doing this, there are four of us working on it. Sue, too, we had the big controversy. Do you start from the salvage or the fold? Salvage. We were divided half and half. Salvage. You start on the salvage? Salvage. You did. have a bigger piece Yes, right. But wait till you see how much you have left. <laughs> Be very stingy when you trim your salvage. So I just go this way and trim, and you could even leave a little smudging right in there if you want. I am right-handed. You just turn your wedge ruler and just hold on to it, and you just cut up, and that is a pair. There's two here. Just turn it, ta-da, and cut it. So we've got four, turn it again, ta-da, and watch this. We have a whole bunch left, Marie. Oh my goodness. I'll share this with you, Marie. <laughs> That's why you gotta be really careful when you cut these. And then you just take them and you turn them around. Now I'm going to tell you something really cool. So you see that we have a center, two and a half inch square. We have four squares that are two and a half inches. Well, whenever you have leftover strips, although this is not a leftover strip, all you have to just do is turn your wedge ruler the opposite way and cut. These will be perfect two and a half inch squares. So Ah, isn't that cool? <laughs> Teresa taught me that. Lots of things. So we've got everything cut and ready to go. And so aren't you excited? No difficult looking pieces, huh? So 
Next page, page seven, it says to cut your four and a half inch square on one diagonal. Yeah? Your ten and three fourths inch square into fourths on both diagonals. Do you need a pattern? No? You're sharing? Okay. Pat will share with you. Okay, so turn the page. Beep. There are actually four identical quarters in this. So we like to do assembly line sewing in the quarters. And I'm just going to actually sew one quarter for you. And I'm going to lay it out right here. One from the 10 and um, 3 fourths inch square. Okay, these are my wedges. And let me tell you, look at the way they are turned. It looks very easy, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah. Well, look twice. Because I had to do some unsewing. <laughs> oh, and so right here in this part, you put your little four squares. So this is one of them. You would stack up all four of them, just like you see in the picture, okay? You get one right, you get them all right. Right? You get them all wrong, you get them all <laughs> <laughs> Which I did. <laughs> okay, so our little flippy arrow says to take this one, flip it right sides together, flip the right row to the left row, right sides together. It is a quarter of an inch seam. Don't use a scant quarter. Use a regular quarter of an inch. So you're just going to take this. Are you, are you hot, Teresa? No, I say you'll be hot. Huh? I say you need to be hot in the iron. Oh, no, I want to make sure the iron's hot. Okay, so, okay, so now i got to get this right. Okay. Ah, let me push all my buttons right at what's going on and off. Okay, quarter of an inch, um, stitch right along here. Then don't uh, cut it apart. We'll pick the second patch up. Use quarter inch foot and just sew right along there. And right at the bottom, it says when you're all done, you're going to clip these apart. So this is one you're going to actually repeat and just do this over. Okay, so then you're just going to take and you're going to press your seam toward the wedge. So I just finger press that way. And now I'm just going to fold this up and just go this way and kind of press it like this with my finger. Okay, flip it right sides together and sew from this side. So the seam is pressed toward the wedge here. The seam is pressed toward the wedge here. So these seams lock together. Ooh, I always take my fingers and kind of go like this. Push with my thumb and just go down with my forefinger so they all lock in place. Looking easy so far, huh? Yes. Yep. You're going to really like it. Okay, so then just go ahead. You have one more seam in this. Use your um, stiletto. And when this is flat, then you know they're locked together. Okay, let's get that line. Uh, put the tongue right. I have a little... About a sixteenth of an inch. Perfect. I can feel it. Okay. So just sew right down to the end. And that makes one quarter. Okay. So now Teresa or Patty, somebody's going to step forward. And we're going to press the seams toward the, toward the, toward the sashing. It says away from the large triangle. So Teresa just... Opened it right up, push it, give it a little steam. Cool. I'm going to pick all this stuff up around it. Okay, and so that's it right there. Okay, so now we're going to just take, um, I'm going to use a 6 by 12, but everybody use something different. So I'm just going to line this up on the line on the mat. Just take a 6 by 12, line it straight up with the end of the wedge. With my rotary cutter, just cut off that one triangle, turn it around, 
uh, repeat on this side, line up the edge with the patch, the line on the ruler, and trim. Easy. Okay, so now you have to turn the page. Turn the page and I threw all the stuff that I needed under here. <laughs> okay. All right, here it is. Okay, so we're already on page 10. Looking good, huh? Yep. Okay, now you need those triangles cut from the four and a half inch square and you're just going to place them on each side like so. Yeah? That looks good. And the little flippy arrow says flip it. And there it's actually just perfect. It's just the right amount of tip hanging out, right? So I'm just going to sew on one side. We're doing good. This is all in real time. Sometimes we speed stuff up. But this is all in real time. Okay. Quarter inch seam. On one side, line it up with your stiletto. Assembly line, cut it off. Okay, and then I put the second triangle on before I press. Just flip it right sides together. And make sure you get it lined up along the top, along here. Okay, and just press, sew this down. And the way all of the seams are pressed, you're not fighting any seams at all. Yay! Cheer for that! No fighting seams and locking seams. Ooh. I think I, I think I lost my thread. It's very important to have thread. <laughs> oh, no. I did it just so I could show you how easy it is to thread the baby lock. <laughs> okay? I always, you know, whenever my machine comes unthreaded, I always go back to the beginning and just thread everything down to the needle. Let me get this down here. Okay. Through here. And I'm up to the last number seven. And I'm going to cut my thread so I have just the right amount of thread. My um, baby lock teacher said, so you don't have any up chucking in your fabric. That's very good, huh? And then there's just this button to push. Are you guys ready? Are you on the needle? Push the button. Yes! Wow. Is that good? I love it! She's really impressed. You know how you, you start to, your eyes start to get bad as you get older and you figure that you're going to have to have your kids come in and thread all your needles. <laughs> That's what I figured. I was going to have to have Orion thread all my needles until. We had to do that for our mom. Yeah, did you have to do them for your mom? You can't believe how many women I've talked to said that it was their job when they were growing up to sit under the, um, the quilt frame, the hand quilting frame, and like... <laughs> this is so funny! I forgot to put my teeth there! <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> I sew without thread? The needle is threaded. No, that person also. But then I didn't put it back on there. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe I did that. I still don't believe what I did. Oh my gosh. Maybe the bobbin's not coming up. <laughs> I don't know. What did I do? I threaded my needle. I have the needle going through my fabric. I'm stitching along. There's red stitches. <laughs> I think I forgot to put my fabric together. <laughs> you know what Patty used to tell everybody whenever she was out? She said, you see Eleanor's face. 
but it's really my hands that are coming up from my mouth. No, no, I never said that. No, I'm always amazed that you can talk and sew at the same time because you'll never see me in front of a sewing machine talking. <laughs> oh my gosh. <coughs> that was too funny. Okay, so we got four. Okay, we got lots of pieces. Okay, these are all extra too. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so, this time I really use thread. Okay, see that little guy right there sticking out? Not much, huh? Not much. Well, you know what I have to tell you? Some people have to have canned laughter. But I don't have to have canned <laughs> laughter. <laughs> I just screw up. <laughs> it's more natural, huh? And I keep on reading that the more you laugh, the more you smile, the longer you live. Yes. yes. So yes. let's laugh a lot. Yes. Right? right? Okay, and I'm just going to cut these little guys off. Isn't that beautiful? See? Yeah. Good? Yes. yes. Like that. Okay, so now let's just turn. We did already. We finished on um, page 10. Okay, so now let's put the uh, sashing between pairs. Got all four. Ta da! Okay, now I have to tell you when I did my first one, I was worried that I was going to have to do pinning and stuff so these would line up across from each other. But you know what? I didn't pay any attention and it didn't matter. <laughs> so these are going to go right in here. You're going to do two sets just like this. Okay, so flip it right sides together. Make sure you have thread in your needle. It's very important. And fabric. <laughs> and fabric. <laughs> oh my gosh and fabric underneath. So make sure you get it lined up at the top because um, you don't want to have to trim, right? No trimming. So I keep on looking for my jumper scrap, but I, I don't know where that is. I think they're going pretty good though. There's one on the ground. You can There's one on the ground. <laughs> okay, no, I will. not that one. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> Marie's going to hang on to that. That's very valuable. That's okay, so that's down one side right there. <coughs> and now we're just going to go ahead and line up the second side. And just make sure you can get those pieces all lined up. The strap is right next to you. Oh, did you already have that? Uh huh. Yes, yeah, somebody just handed it oh, to okay. me. <laughs> but I forgot to put it in. It seems like I have fabric dust in my throat now. Does that happen? Honestly, things are going from bad to worse. Right there. Marie, you said you, Marie used to come in the morning and then she came one time at night and she said, we have too much fun at night. That's because I'm like half awake, huh? <coughs> okay, so... Teresa, are you going to do the pressing for me? Sure. All right. And can you talk? I can talk. All right. <laughs> okay. So you two girls can actually demo and tell them what why I'm doing this um, so that I can get the next one. So, okay? Oh. There. Why are you going to press towards the... Uh-huh. This is called my ladder. Sashing. 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 And I'm doing the second half. Okay. <laughs> okay. We're going to uh, press towards the sashing. And then the next, uh, when we join the two parts together, we press against the sashing. And that's what it makes it. Everything is going to lock here. And I give all these things back to her. Uh huh. See? What I'm doing, I'm pressing towards the sashes and the left end, okay? And Patty, will you go oh, to wait, the... that's wrong. Can you <laughs> go to the uh, board? Yeah, I think you, you told it yeah. wrong. Can yeah. you go to the quilt on the wall and point out what oh, we're concerned sure. about now? Yeah. I, I 
That okay. Oh, <gasps> you huh? pressed that one wrong. Yeah, you did. Okay, you can just use that one. Okay. We're not quite ready for that. Oh. Oh, we're not ready for this? No, just point out why oh. we're doing it right there. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah? Right there. there? Uh -huh. Remember the story how you said you were afraid they wouldn't match? So oh, right. Stars? Right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Here. Go there. That's fine. That's okay. In the middle? Yeah, there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. How long do I have to hold my finger there? <laughs> Okay. Oh, look how well they match. <laughs> That's the idea. You're supposed to tell how well they match. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> because on one set they press in, the other set presses out. So when you set them together, they're alternating. The Yay! Yay! Okay. So the first step, okay, though, so let's just check this. Look on page 11 beside number two. You're supposed to press your seams toward the sashing, okay? Press your seams toward the sashing. Okay, so we're getting this. We're getting this. Okay. <laughs> you, you were thinking about something else, I think, while I was doing this, huh? Away. Okay. Okay. So I have two halves done. Now I want to make this long piece that's going to go down through the middle. It has the two and a half inch center square right in the middle. And you're just going to flip and sew a sashing to each end. All right, Teresa. Okay, we're getting there. Okay, check out the stitches. Check out the seam on this long piece with the center. Okay, how do the seams press on that? It's right beside step number four. Okay, toward the sashing. And so I've got one on right here. I'm gonna take a second piece right here and get it sewn. All right. So you're going to press toward. I'm just trying to entertain you. <laughs> yeah, that was me. I did it. <laughs> oh my gosh. I lost my needle again. I quit. <laughs> okay, now we are going to switch to some samples we already have sewn. <laughs> okay. Oh my goodness. Okay, so this is the seam right here. It goes towards the sashing, and they go in opposite. This goes and gets pressed not towards the sashing, but this time now all the seams get pressed away from the sashing, away from the sashing. Looking good, huh? Okay, so... So now there's, we're going to turn it around, look from the right side. I wonder who sewed this. <laughs> Somebody actually sewed, but wait, there's more. <laughs> but wait, there's more. Okay, so let's just take this, get rid of this, because just to really help us make sure we lock it good, um, we're just, just going to take this piece right here, the sashing on the end, we're just going to 
fold them right sides together and press just a little crease in. Okay, can you do that yeah, really sure. fast? Sorry. Okay, you do that. And it's really smart to press all four. We're going to use that as a guide. And, oh, this one, that's good. Very important. So she's just lining it up. I said, told Patty, maybe we should do this before we um, put the strips in, but then I realize you press them out. You press the folds out. That's why it's really a good idea right now. And that's right on page 12 at step number seven. See it? Good? Okay, yeah, we're going to square these up to 18 inches. This is a humongous ruler, 22 inches, mm. 22 wow. inches. You don't use it often, but when you have it, when you need it, you're really excited. Okay, that's great, Teresa. Thank you. Okay, so we're squaring it to 18. What's half of 18? Nine. So how about we find 9 and put it right in the very center, okay? 9, there's 9 right in the center. Oh, my gosh. The, that laid down so nice. Okay, nine right there in the very center. Look at the fold and look at the corner of the ruler. Is that good? Ooh, can you see that? And then right over here you want 18 right on the fold. You can tweak it a little bit right there. You want 18 right up here. You can just do a little tweaking, pull it around. And this is this diagonal line is going right down through, coming right out on the fold down here. There's a second measurement you can check on. It's five, and this is right here. Five is just lining up on those seam lines. It's great. Mm. It's really good. It's really really good. And just check all around because I'm very very close. See Teresa, this is what I said. I'm really close. So I'm um, but I still have it, but I'm very close. See? So may, maybe I'm about a thread too wide in my seam, huh? Maybe. Okay, so when you square up, you always have one in the top right corner, and you just square up one side. You don't have to hold this ruler down very hard because it's so heavy, it's just laying there. Okay, so you do two sides. Whoop, go through there again. And now for the last two sides, you tip up your ruler. Don't turn your ruler, but take your block and turn it so you're going to trim up the last two sides. Now you put 18 right along the left side and the bottom edge. Oh, it's really good again. Very good again. Okay, nine, diagonal line, point on the fold, looking good. Five. Five, whoops, I better slide it back down. Thank you, Marie. <laughs> Thank you, but I have to tweak it a little because I don't want to make it shorter than 18. Oop. Okay, it's not quite on, but I still need 18. Okay. Is that good? Yes. It's good. Okay. Oop. And there it is. All right. Ta da! <laughs> I don't want to show with that. Good? Yeah. Whoa. All right. So now, Patty, are you awake to do the next oh, step? I can do that. Okay, so now we want to keep an eye. I'm on page 13. You always look. You look at the picture of the quilt on page 13. You want to take a block so the top left, the seam is pressed in. And the bottom, yeah, where she's putting, and then the bottom, if the seams are pressed out, and if you literally no. oh, go over close, here, oh, they're out. Yeah. Those seams are out, and the top seam is in. And you can literally see the impression from the seam on there. If you look, you place all blocks exactly like that, 
and every block will lock together in its fashion. The left, Whoa. upper left corner in. Yeah, in. And these are out. And that, that, Sue no. is the one, the one that figured that out, I think. And so I'm just going to sit here and thread my needle again. I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, and so you just, um, when you sew your top together, it's pretty amazing. Okay. Are you going to sew them together? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh okay. No, I'm it sounded done like with my show. You're ready to go. Oh. Yeah. Well, I, you know what I notice? These are bias cuts. So if you need to just give them a little stretch, they'll match up because I, I had no problem doing that just because they stretch. The star. Yeah, the star. So isn't that amazing? So oh. I'm just a pink. The pink. Oh, that one. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's like we were like drinking or something, but we weren't. <laughs> so let's take a let's just go ahead and look at what Patty's doing too. Teresa made the blocks. Uh, this was a jelly roll. Um, and it's six, it's the same plan. She did six oh, different. Oh. Okay. So Nobody can get it. <laughs> six blocks, each one a different color family. And then there's four fabrics from each. Four values. Yeah, four values. Look or, at the green. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's my favorite. The orange one. That's yeah, I love green. that. Yeah, and then she put a complementary color in the center. Very, very pretty, huh? Cool. Yay. Yay. All right. So that, if you wanted to see that quilt, if you want to do that quilt, this one, you look on page 14 and 15. Your yardage is right there. It says using a jelly roll. And it talks all about it. Looking good. And there's um, a picture of how to cut the wedges and the two and a half inch square on page 16. So, looks good. And then it shows how to um, lay it out on page 17. Are you with me? Yes. No? Who said no? Candace. Whoa. Oh, you turn two pages at once. Okay, what I have here is the pink one. If you keep on turning on page 18 and 19, the pink one is there. And it talks about using two lattices and star points. And that's what I'm putting together right here. Um, I have, let me see. I think you have the star underneath. The star is underneath? The mm -hmm. one that you trim. Oh. Oh, okay. <clears throat> so this is basically what the star looks like. And, and Patty fussy cut little pieces. Aren't they cute? And so this is the first lattice. And this is the second lattice, the outside lattice. And the reason we have this outside one is so that we can get those star points on the outside edges. And then this is just finished with a square. Oops, like that. Pretty good. OK, and then you need to have a one right here like this. And then you just keep repeating this. Um, along here. Now, you have 96 two-inch squares for star points. Ah, and you have to draw a diagonal line on the wrong side of every one of them. You say, forget that, huh? Yes. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah <laughs> forget that. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> Introducing the so straight. So you don't have to actually draw any lines if you use your little so straight. Look, that little white tab that pulled right off one did. Okay. This is a quilt in a day product. It is so good. I actually just leave mine on right now. I, I think I'm sewing a better quarter of an inch seam. But it's got, um, says line at the edge of the feed dogs. And this says stitching line. So that's what we want to use as our guide, the stitching line. So I'm just going to put it right at the edge. I actually already have a line on my throat plate right there that helps but it's not long, so I'm just going to line it up like that and stick it down. And right here, this is going to be my, I want to make one just like this. So Teresa went, oops, use an unmarked one. You could use a mark. You could mark it. You just sew on the line. Okay, you want to see that? We'll just do it. Okay, fine. <coughs> we're still awake, right? We laughed so much, now we're waking now we're up. Huh? Now we're going to live 10 more years. We are. I really like to have my um, open toe foot, but I haven't been doing too well, so I don't think I'll even look for it. But when you draw your line, you just sew on the line, okay? You sew on the line, and that's pretty easy, right? So, cut, and... You take a ruler and you just cut a quarter of an inch away and you open and you press. Okay? So now we're just going to say, forget that. We don't want to draw 96 lines. So you take an unmarked square and you just put it like this on the angle. And you line up the points of this. <laughs> okay, what are you laughing about? One there and right on that point. Okay? What are you guys laughing about? I want to know. I want to live you, long. Something about the machine. Oh, yeah. the machine. Somebody else has that machine. Oh, they do? Yes, and they love it. Oh, good. Is that you? No, I wish. Oh, oh, you wish. I know where you can buy one. <laughs> okay, I have the point of this square right on this center line. And I'm just sewing along. I'm trying to keep that point right on that center line. And then whenever you run out of line, you just go right off on the needle. And so this little so straight is so good. I love it. Okay. So there. And then cut it off. And ta-da! All right. Yay. And look. Yay. See? Yes. You've got a quarter of an inch right there. Yep. And that's how all of these are done. And all of these directions are on pages 20 and 21. Oh, we're doing so good. Look, this is going to go right here like that. Look, I'm nearly done. <laughs> I have one star done. All right. Do you guys have questions? We're doing good, huh? You're okay? Yes. Are you ready, Patty? I'm ready. Okay, we're going to pick all of these up, keep them all organized. Here, you want to press that one so it's ready. We can finish this tomorrow, Teresa, huh? Sounds good. Do you believe all the different varieties <laughs> we put in this? Okay, and I'm just going to show you. Patty's coming over, and while she's coming over, I'm going to show you that your so straight can peel up. If it, gets, um, if it gets a lot of fiber on it, you can take soap and water and wash it and apply it again. It's a Scotch product. And see how we like to put these little Scotch tabs back on there when you're storing it. Good. Okay, Patricia. Okay. 
Do you have any of these little um, charm squares at home? You don't know what to do with them? Layer cakes? Well, that's what we're going to use to do the 12-inch block. And this is the table runner. Uh, the project is in the back of your pattern, uh, page 23, I think, or 22, uh -huh. yes. 22, 23. And um, when I take a, a charm pack, usually, well, this one is not done with a charm pack, so we're going to put these aside. And <laughs> <laughs> better wish. No, no charm pack. Forget that. Let's start over. See, you got me started. Okay. Now, so this project actually uses uh, uh, strips. Strips! And, yay! And the, um, the thing I want to point out, we're going to start, usually I like to do the wedges in the dark, and the, um, the wedges um, we just have a little clarification. Um, it does tell you that you need 12 2 by 6 and a half inch pairs, but we actually only need six pairs, but there are 12 total strips. Does that make sense? So, so you should cross, cross out the word. Um, you could take away the piece that says pair. And put strips Yeah, there. just put 12 strips. And, and as you know, these are mirror image, so we'll place wrong side together. And I've got my wedge template. Now, this, this wedge that we used for the 18-inch block, you can adapt it for the smaller block. But we have to do a couple things. Eleanor gave you this nice little drawing. Of the, this is the actual size of the wedge, and there's a couple ways you can use this first idea. Um, if you want to make a photocopy, cut it out, you can tape it right on your ruler, and then we're just going to cut. Um, well, first of all, you want to line up this edge and this edge, and then cut it right there and then you get actually two pairs now the we, width is two inches right yeah it's All a of the two inch strip are there for thank the you block. for yeah yes. just tell me if i forget anything yeah, i will <laughs> you make sure they all know okay right it's two by six and a half and this will give me four uh, four wedges and these are going to be both the same size um, and then let me just uh, Is that cool? place them over here. Now, there's a couple other ways. If you don't like to photocopy, if you don't want to use tape, there is another idea. Uh, you can, where's your little template? The one that's not marked. Um, this one is, is another, yeah, this is another idea that I'm just going to tell you all about it. You can place your template on top of the drawing. Uh -huh. Put some, uh, this is some Invisigrip on top of the ruler, and then with a fine permanent pen, you can trace around that, that uh, pattern. Or if you like to do things very quickly, this is a little shortcut, this is how I did it. It only takes a second, and it's free. I, I get I get all these address well I get all these address labels in the mail. Everybody sends me people that are asking for donations. That's they why all want free. money and they have to they give you something. So if you want to find a use, all you need is one label. If you just line up your template and then you just put your address label right on the edge of that line. And that's, that's the way I did all my quilts. So one of the viewers this morning oh. called to tell us that everybody in the country know, knows where you live. <laughs> <in there. laughs> I'll get lots of, lots of mail. They're going to come over and look at your quilt. Okay. You get a lot of Christmas cards. That's right. <laughs> a lot of Christmas cards. Okay. And then you see how quick that is? Just line it up with your label, and nobody will ever take your wedge because your name is on it. And they can send it to you if you lose it. 
Yeah. Right? That's good. That's a good way. That's like good. That. Yeah. And then we'll just cut that in half. And that gives me, whoops, better get that little spot. And this actually will give me uh, four wedges. Oh, no, actually, I have all eight, don't I? I did four and four. That makes eight. We're doing, yeah, a little math. You knew that. <laughs> okay, so that's my, um, that's my technique. We did it perfect this morning, by the way. I know. <laughs> I know, we get tired. Okay, so anyway, now you understood, understood that. Yes. Now, now let's talk about those little squares. You have all those charm packs, layer cakes. Yes. Well, you can use a, a five inch charm. And now you might recognize this uh, charm pack. I, you, I, it was uh, last time, last month when we did the Milky Way, I used the same charm pack. There was only one in the shop, but we got lots in. And I really like this uh, set because there's lots of repeats. And I was able to make uh, some blocks. Actually, my, my pack looks pretty small because I made all these blocks. Wow. And yeah. And first of all, um, this one, um, if you notice, all wedges are the same. And if you have two packs, two charm packs, you'll have enough to do. Oh, yeah, we have them out front. Oh, I'll show you that one now in a minute. Yeah. Yeah. So if you have uh, two charm packs, you'll have enough. You can do um, four five inch squares. We'll do one block, but another way you can do it is if you have a layer cake, 10 inch square, just cut into four, and that's a quick way to get your four, uh, your four squares. And it looks like you cut your sashing oh, right. from your layer cake With as the well. layer cake, <laughs> these are long enough. These actually need to be nine inches. We've got a little extra inch here, and I took some of those light colors and cut them into uh, two inch strips. Uh, use your uh, shape cut and let's see what else I made. There's one. Here's another one. This one I used another layer cake. Uh, this one maybe it's a little busy and if you yeah. don't you don't think so? Well if you don't want to get the layer cake you can use yardage. And this I found in the, in the shop. I like that, kind of that um, mauve, mauve color, um, which I would have enough to do every block the same. Or you can do all different ones. And I'm going to save this one for later. I'll show you how to square up the block. Now, to, um, to cut your wedges, um, with one five inch square, you can get two wedges and and a little bonus so first of all if you fold it in half ooh, a bonus yes we have a little ooh. little extra a little okay. scrap a little scrap we don't want to waste so if you fold in half we will we'll get a mirror image and then line up the raw edge with the edge of the template and there's my um my um Address label. 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 Thank you. We're and doing Irma-isms. Uh, thank you. Irma was our mother. She <laughs> forgot a lot. <laughs> well, and then just cut right on the point. Just cut that off. There's our little leftover piece. But one more thing, I need to cut this down to a two inch. Obviously, right now it's two and a half. So we'll just uh, line up on the raw edge and one little cut. Here's a little present for you. This is for Marie. <laughs> yeah. Here, Marie, you can make a whole quilt out of the scraps. So that gives me one pair. And then this little scrap is just the right size. We can get a two inch square. 
We'll turn it around and cut that off. And this is all that's left. <laughs> Whoopee! <laughs> and that's a two okay. inch square. Now, what you might want to think about um, this quilt is another idea which I did the. Um, this is another set from last month. This is called the um, Rustic Weave. We didn't have them last month, but we, now we've got them. Uh, they're 25% off. Got all these bright colors mm. and then some neutral colors for your second quilt. But what I did um, with, two, with two sets, you can get uh, a pair and on, in this case, I did two blocks the same, which I did four different values of one color. Actually, these were the reds and the orange and the pinks. And that little extra square that you get uh, will work nicely in the four, four squares. So on this one, you can see, well, there's one pair and there's the bonus. So does that make sense to you? Okay, good. I like that. Okay, and then when your block is finished, we'll get the 12 and a half inch square up. And let's see if I can find it. Did I? Oh, I brought one too. I'll, I'll use this one. And again, if you put that little crease in the center and I just go right for the crease I don't even it doesn't even matter what matches here I just line it up on those <laughs> then I'm done I'm ready to, to just zip around it All four and it's sides. done yeah so there it is Good job. Yay! thank you, thank you.